I'm hoping in this exhibit that we can take some of the uh, issues that we've been discussing for quite a while and reframe them with some data, uh, which will make uh, it more make make us more effective at telling our story. Uh, the complexities that surrounds our situation um, and need to be framed, I believe, uh, in a way where we can more effectively tell our story and hopefully get some changes and approaches uh, on the uh, legislative uh, level. A uh, starting, uh, good starting point would be, of course, a uh, commitment to full funding, replacement funding for any personal property tax uh, losses that might come out of the legislation that is currently being considered. So what I did is I, uh, my main theme here is that these cities are, are creating jobs, cities like ours, cities like Troy, cities like Farmington Hills, that have significant commercial uh, development and office development and industrial are getting hammered. And those that are in a uh, basically a, a bedroom communities have uh, dis disproportionately uh, turned, you know, gotten uh, at least not as, as much of a hit. So I thought I would take three cities that uh, are uh, well known for their uh, commercial activities and are uh, near us, nearby, as well as a, a, a well run nearby city uh, that is 97% uh, residential and only 3% uh, commercial. If you look at the data at the top, you will see that since 2000, beginning in 2009, 2010, we have had four successive years of some rather significant and serious uh, de uh, downward uh, trends in <coughs> our taxable values. Uh, the main reason for that has been uh, a combination of residential and commercial. But if you look at 2012-13, uh, we have a figure of 11%, and that bears some discussion. Uh, that's, com that's comprised of the 6.4% on our total tax base that the assessor uh, has on the rolls as of January 31st, uh, 2012. Uh, however, we know that there are, <coughs> are a number of commercial appeals in process, and we uh, have to recognize potential liability uh, for those appeals. And that is 4.6% uh, or we generally refer to this as 6% 5%. So that's where the 11% comes from. So you'll see that the city that has the greatest amount of commercial, that's us, we're 37% residential, 63% uh, commercial and other. Commercial and other is industrial and personal property. Uh, so you see that we're taking a a cumulative 41.9 percent uh, dip in a four-year period, uh, and frankly, 2013-14, uh, we're looking at the potential of another eight and a half percent. So, if you look at Troy, <coughs> basically Troy is 61 percent residential, 39 percent commercial, but they still have a significant commercial tax base, and you'll see that they've taken a 20 over a 24 percent hit in the last four years. I'll take a look at Farmington Hills. Farmington Hills is 65% residential, 35% uh, commercial, uh, and uh, they have taken a hit of 34.2%. Then we look at Huntington Woods, and we, we see they're 97% residential, 3% commercial, and I'd venture to say a very small percentage of their commercial would be personal property. So they're, although I know they care because they show up at, at various uh, professional association meetings and they always uh, uh, contribute to the discussion, uh, they have a good reputation for being a well-run city, and, and uh, but they don't have much at issue when it comes to personal property. We do. 15% of our tax base is commercial, or is personal property. And uh, as we'll see later, there's a significant effect. Uh, in 2013-14, uh, we are anticipating a $750,000 hit uh, 
due to uh, elimination of all personal property for businesses with under forty thousand dollars of uh, taxable value in in uh, personal property. Personal property is a machinery and equipment uh, used in business, and so that means that any business with under eighty thousand dollars worth of equipment, this taxable value is one half generally of market value, uh, will be excluded, and that's uh, quite a few businesses. Uh, so that's 750 in year one, and there are no plans uh, that we're aware of uh, to replace any of those funds. So we take a look at Troy, 24%, uh, Farmington Hills, 34 and then 9.6 uh, for a, a community, 97% uh, residential. During that time, they uh, did have a tax increase. Uh, the Huntington Woods did. And as a matter of fact, their total tax, taxable value, or the total uh, property tax millage is uh, 25, so that's more than ours. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, when, when the newspapers mm -hmm. write up their budget for 2012-13, uh, there's some interesting uh, information. It says all cities have quite a bit of financial uncertainty going forward, uh, the city manager said, but we have been fortunate that we haven't faced the same measure, ma the same massive cuts that o others have. And then they talk about their workforce uh, uh, being reduced by 37% since 1990. Uh, our, our figure is 24%, but we're only counting from 2004. So if we go back to 1990, I'm sure that we're, we're probably on pace with those kinds of numbers. Uh, they talk about continued concessions. We're going to be talking about the same thing. Uh, uh, tax revenues are projected to be up. Uh, that's a combination of they didn't get much of a hit, plus they had a, a, a millage increase. And then they say some things that it would be nice to be able to say, such as things seem to be leveling off and property values <coughs> appear to be stabilizing. Looks like the Great Recession is in and brighter days are ahead. Uh, we, we look forward to being able to to, to verbalize those those kinds of sentiments. <coughs> they talk about road bonds and uh, road concerns about road uh, road issues. We share those. And uh, they state they want to get streets done faster and they're deteriorating faster than we can replace them. We totally agree with that. So all municipalities have uh, things in common and any responsible municipality is basically concerned with infrastructure and roads and everyone's in full agreement. Uh, certainly the, the road financing, which is at the same level as it was 10 years ago, uh, is woefully inadequate. When uh, you talk about the uh, some of the products used have increased uh, dramatically and uh, the cost of one lane mile of road has increased 63% uh, uh, in, in the uh, last, since in the last 10 years. So, uh, with that, uh, I think uh, what we can do with this is uh, I think we we can assert that the current uh, mix of legislation and taxation uh, creates uh, an adverse situation and frankly punishes the job creators. Uh, that uh, it's unfair and unbalanced, and uh, I'm hoping that this uh, uh, kind of information will help us to be able to send our message uh, more uh, more effectively. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, turn to the uh, booklet and uh, go through the highlights, move around a little bit through the pages, and uh, then uh, we'll be glad to have, uh, answer any questions or any concerns uh, the council might have. And of course, we're looking for, for creative, uh, creative approaches. Uh, the big picture for us uh, in terms of uh, uh, what we're facing, unprecedented uh, in the city's 50 plus years history. We've never had a decrease of even 3% in our taxable values. Uh, uh, the 3% that was the starting figure in 910, and it's uh, each year, successive years, got, got tougher uh, to, to the point uh, that we're talking about of basically 42% at this point in four years. Uh, uncharted waters. Uh, the, the, the uncertainty created by the uh, 
commercial appeals is an especially, especially difficult challenge for us. We're going to have to constantly monitor and follow them. We're going to have probably more budget adjustments than we've had in the past. Uh, we will have a, an adjustment at the end of this fiscal year uh, to uh, ensure that we bring the, the reserves that we need to forward into the budget <coughs> so that we don't have any funds that uh, have a technical deficit because that, that causes the state, uh, it causes us extra work and, and is a negative as far as the state's concerned. Uh, the de details of the plan, the key details, uh, we have not used fund balance for operations. You'll see later that there's a fund balance draw, but that is for uh, as a reserve against uh, uh, appeals, uh, commercial appeals. Uh, general fund expenditures are down a million seven or two and a half percent. The total budget uh, of uh, 68.4 versus 66.7 in the previous year. Total budget is essentially flat, uh, a difference of 231,288 is uh, basically uh, has to do with uh, grants and an increase in uh, uh, cable revenues <coughs> due to the franchise. Uh, infrastructure investments are up nearly 2 million or 25 percent. Uh, Public Works has presented us with uh, 20 projects totaling uh, 10 million. Uh, 010, uh, and that's uh, an increase of 25% over the 18 projects that we had planned for 2011-12. Uh, continued emphasis on community appearance and code enforcement. Uh, we're going to be uh, asking for a, a minor ordinance change uh, in the future. Uh, this year, the weather caught us, uh, uh, got us behind a little bit because there's, there's certain deadlines that involve the month of May, and we may be talking about moving forward to April. Uh, that will be coming forward as we uh, have to do some homework yet. But we are we are very much concerned with keeping the appearance of the city, and with any vacant homes uh, not having the appearance of being vacant. Uh, training remains funded. Uh, we're asking people to do more with less. I know that's uh, getting to be. Uh, kind of old, uh, old slogan, or old phrase, but it's true, and uh, you can't do that effectively without providing the necessary skills. Uh, in terms of revenues, we are projecting an 11% decline in our taxable values, 6.04% uh, for the tax rolls, that's Mr. DiGiorina's tax roll figure, uh, as he submits uh, he submitted on January 31st. Uh, we have agreed that it's reasonable to put an allowance in of roughly 5% for tax appeals that would will be our responsibility after January 31st, and they carry all the way through August and go against the uh, uh, the fiscal the preceding fiscal year. Um, so the fund balance draw. Uh, is from the equalization reserve that is set aside to handle appeals in the general fund. We have detail coming up on that. Uh, fees and charges are up about 2.3 percent, uh, and uh, that basically um, is a function of a new fee that we've uh, instituted in uh, assessing as a piece of it uh, for transfers uh, that are not uh, filed in a timely manner. State shared revenues are up almost 8%, and that's uh, because we were successful in getting 100% of the uh, EVIP, uh, Economic Vitality Incentive Program monies. Uh, we weren't sure when we saw the thing that we could achieve 100%, so in this fiscal year, we budgeted only half of that money. But next year, we feel that we are going to get to 100%, and so we, uh, we increased the statutory state shared revenues and the constitutional we increased two percent because of a modest improvement in the economy. So we perceive that we need to focus on tax base enhancement while simultaneously reducing operating costs as the key to the city's long term sustainability as an independent driving municipality. We turn to page three. 
uh, equalization reserves. This is for appeals. I might add that we have very few residential appeals simply because of the decline in the residential uh, values are such that most folks uh, uh, understand the situation and are not coming in for a few more bucks off their their, their, their taxes have uh, for city uh, fares has have decreased uh, significantly and they're aware of that. Uh, so most of our appeals are in the uh, the commercial area, and uh, so we have set aside in the general fund uh, four million seven hundred eighty thousand nine fifty six. Uh, so we're going to we're programming to use almost half of that uh, in the next year. But we hope that this is only going to last two years. Uh, that's what we feel. This is the worst two years coming up, and things should level off. Um, then you have. Uh, a, a number that I want to draw your attention to in the box, 486,981. That is the unassigned general fund fund balance, which is eight tenths of one percent, and is just about as tight as you can run a ship. Uh, the the bond rating agencies like to see 10 percent, so we're less than one percent, and the government finance officers association likes to see 20 percent. So. Uh, we have to tightly manage things. We are doing so. <coughs> we anticipate that in this fiscal year uh, we will have a favorable variance from budget, meaning that we will outperform the budget when the auditors uh, come to take a look at where we are June 30. Uh, for operations, we we believe we will out, outperform the budget. We had a number of vacancies uh, during the fiscal year and uh, we did not spend the money. Uh, shown below are the reserves of the various quote unquote outside departments and departments other than the general fund. Uh, major streets uh, has a reserve, locals, uh, parks and rec, and library. The total that's set aside for these appeals is nearly seven million dollars. <coughs> I might add, when we do the budget adjustment this year um, and we bring monies out of these pots into various budgets, okay, the reason we're doing it at the end of the year is it can't be spent. Okay, it can only be expended. Uh, not that anyone would do that, but we don't we don't want to even put a temptation there. And also the numbers is the the, the the closer to the end, the more uh, accurate your numbers will be. Uh, but if, there, if we bring money into the budget and it's not needed uh, for appeals, that money falls right back in to the equalization reserves for the various funds. So I want council to have a, a comfort level uh, that when we make these adjustments, that if we don't want to come short because then you get a technical deficit, then it gets reported to the state, and the state sends you a letter, then you have to respond to the plan, and it's extra. It's an extra effort. It's a negative on the city, so we are going to bring an amount that is sufficient. Uh, one of the uh, things that, that a responsible government does is uh, looks at infrastructure constantly and does what they can do on the infrastructure side and not just operations uh, of, of uh, on the street services. We have ten million dollars of capital projects planned. Uh, nothing is automatic about these projects. Uh, when council approves the budget, that doesn't give anyone the authority to do anything except come back to council. Uh, and uh, it does give the purchasing uh, agent and, and those in the departments, engineering, etc., uh, to work on bids. But everything comes back to city council and has to be re-justified. But this is the plan. Uh, and we're looking at uh, a million six in major street work. Most of these are projects that are either federal or state government and we have a small piece uh, in comparison. Uh, generally we're at we're below 50 percent, usually around 10 to 25 percent is our participation level. So we are getting a lot of work done for, uh, for our million six. Uh, water and sewer is in good shape. Uh, uh, frankly they've always built a capital 
a portion in their budget. Uh, good for them. Uh, they deserve a lot of credit for that. And uh, in times when uh, when times are a little bit better, uh, we we boosted the capital up a little. And so this year we're hammering the rates down. Uh, they got uh, nearly a nine percent pass through from the agencies that su supply water and sewerage services. And uh, we are going to get the cost to the uh, to the consumer to the to the customer uh, no an increase of no more than five percent. So we'll be working together on that. Uh, uh, just because people are hurting and the number five percent sounds a lot worse than a number close to five percent. So uh, the detail of each project is a paragraph on each. Uh, they're available for your review uh, anytime, but we will we will be coming back to these descriptions when we come back to council with with the particular uh, project. Transmittal letters are required for charter. That's uh, the next pages nine through seventeen. Uh, they reflect the priorities and concerns uh, that are embedded within the proposed budget. Uh, Mayor Lawrence uh, reviewed the transmittal letter at the May 7th CLW meeting. That letter is a result of a uh, thorough inspection of the budget, a uh, thorough discussion of the budget, and uh, the transmittal letter. If you haven't had a chance to read it, uh, both of them are worth reading, but uh, I think that especially the mayor's transmittal uh, letter has a lot of uh, material in it that uh, is high priority and has some good, good <laughs> suggestions. Um, forging ahead to the uh, next section, which is budget millage summary. Uh, this is our annual one page uh, of the budget all in one page. And what it reflects is what we provided the last year's budget. Uh, we'll get into a de uh, excruciating detail and footnotes about anything that has a variance of 5% in any of the budgets. But uh, we also provided last year's just for for uh, reference and frame of, uh, frame of uh, compare reference. Uh, page uh, 18. Okay, so what you see on the left side of the revenues is the 2.460586 draw for fund downs. Uh, that is uh, for uh, strictly for appeals, and if it's not necessary, it falls falls back in uh, to fund balance. There's a similar amount. There are similar amounts in the outside funds. For example, the library uh, has uh, a <coughs> 2,630 for appeals costs. Uh, Parks and Rec 215,000, uh, and so they're they're providing for appeals, and frankly, they're also taking some fund balance for operations. But they're working to get out of that habit. Um, we do have a stronger fund balance posture, so there is some tolerance for them using some fund balance at this point. But uh, we, we're, they're, they're well aware that the goal is that the operations of, of uh, any department uh, should not be using fund balance. Fund balance should be for one-time projects uh, of a capital nature uh, or of a contingency nature. Uh, what does happen in the process is we fine-tune these numbers, and June 18th we uh, come back with uh, any changes. They're documented, and normally they're not very significant. Uh, the city assessor's numbers uh, get reviewed by the county and the state, right? And they come back, and usually they, they don't do much with them. They may make a they may make a change here and there, but the numbers that uh, Mr. Tijerina submits. Uh, get get uh, approved, and we get a one uh, a one classification or a one uh, point uh, point oh factor, <coughs> which is what you want. That says your assessments are good. <coughs> in our history, we've only received one factor that I'm aware of, and in fact, they said. Your, at that time, years ago, that our assessments were, in fact, uh, a tad low, so they wanted to give us some additional <coughs> funding, and we said okay, but we're setting that funding aside for neighborhood projects, and we did.
did do that, and that's how we use those monies. So we anticipate a one factor on our assessments. Uh, block grant will be changed. Uh, it should read 515 to 11. Uh, <coughs> that takes into account reprogram funds. Uh, we didn't have those numbers at the time, uh, so that would be adjusted. Uh, the NSP has increased, and that is uh, due to NSP 3. Uh, and uh, that was awarded basically on the merits of the performance uh, to take on the NSP 1 program. Uh, you see the total is essentially flat for last year. And any increase is basically due uh, to grants. And <coughs> you'll see later there's a significant increase in cable, and that's because of new revenues. <coughs> Turning to page 20. We're looking at our millage and our revenues that are created by the millage. Uh, Millage 6.6094. This is for general operations. That's the rollback seven percent or seven mills. We're at our charter maximum. Uh, the rollback is due to Headley, the effect of Headley in years where there was major growth. Uh, police and fire is a rollback seven. That's 6.8906. Uh, and uh, That is the same situation. Uh, total of 13.5 for operations. Police and fire pension, uh, nearly four mills. Uh, that's actuarial requirements. Those funds are single purpose and cannot be used for any other reason. <coughs> and uh, we have a habit here of obeying our actuaries. Uh, some cities tinker with actuarial reports, and that's a one-way road to trouble. So. We may, we, may, we may challenge the actuaries, but when the exercise is done, whatever number they give us is, is, where, is, is how we construct the budget. Residential street millage, uh, maintenance, one mill. Uh, what we did with that is when we had the public safety uh, millage increase, uh, a, a successful uh, election, uh, we did a heavy override in the middle of that uh, language. And so we got residential streets up to one mill. Uh, that's their max. Uh, Parks and Rec, we got up to their 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 max of 1.75, and Library got an increase to 2.8. Uh, Public Act 298 is uh, affectionately referred to as the quote unquote garbage millage, and we use those for actual cleanup uh, and appearance issues on our roadsides. Uh, 59 uh, is a new millage for some number of years, uh, cities have been allowed to assess a, a fit up to $50,000 for to encourage tax base tax base growth. Uh, up until now, we have uh, maybe been uh, didn't find the need for it. Now we're going to use it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're incorporating it in. It's a very small number. It's way over to the right of the decimal. But it's why you see a new, a new uh, source listed, 298/59. Drains at large, uh, uh, that's uh, an increase, and we're going to on the next page we'll get into uh, the changes and, and, and why they're there, and what they, what accounts for the changes. Uh, the county drains at large is the drains that uh, that uh, we're responsible for funding in terms of maintenance and debt. Um, it's, a, it's a small amount, but you're going to see on the next page it is an increase substantially. Uh, taxable valuations we've used for this purpose on 11% reduction. Uh, the top number is what we live off of, basically. That's what, the, where, what all the funds uh, have to use as their basis uh, for their for their uh, tax revenues. Now, the other numbers have to do with the independent. Uh, agencies such as the DBA that have their own funding source. Uh, we just showed them all down uh, 11. Uh, when you look at uh, Mr. Tijerina's numbers and when we get into uh, uh, some final uh, numbers when uh, they come in from, from uh, the state, 
uh, he's got some of these numbers down even more than 11 percent. So some of these outside uh, agencies got hit pretty, pretty substantially. But uh, we're using 11 percent as our decrease for the top number, which is what we uh, fund the general fund, the PNR library, etc. Uh, that's that's what we use. Uh, police and fire. Next page. Uh, you'll see uh, that uh, the only changes are uh, for the actuarial requirements of the police and fire pension. They've gone up substantially. And that has to do uh, with, it, with uh, uh, a smoothing effect, four-year look back on investments. So you've got investments in there. Uh, you've got um, uh, the other factors. Uh, I believe also that that the reduction in the number of uh, people participating causes the, the rate to have to go up for the because this rate is assigned to each each employee, so that has an effect as well. But it's basically uh, investment returns uh, that that will carry the day here. Uh, Public Act 298 is up slightly. We already talked about that. Drains and large is up substantially. Uh, the reason for that is maintenance on aging drains. Uh, county water resource repairs. Uh, we can't ignore the infrastructure. And uh, I asked uh, Mike Kabowski, well, what happens if you don't deal with this? And he says ero erosion, malfunctions, possible road collapse. And I said, oh, okay, I've heard enough. Uh, we are closely monitoring this. It's a significant increase. Uh, when you see the total uh, tax levy, um, we are up 4.8 percent, but uh, since most residents' valuations have dropped 7 percent, most residents will see a slight decrease in their city taxes. On page 22 is a 20 year history of the village, and you will see that uh, we are uh, at um, the highest level in 20 years, and that again is a function of the fact that our uh, the other side of the equation is millage times value times taxable value equals re equals revenues, uh, and uh, that's that's that explains the increase. Um, it's an attempt to overcome the tax base erosion, basically, and <coughs> to maintain services. Uh, we look forward to the day when. Uh, tax base is increased because we can reduce the levy if the tax base uh, increases. Next page basically shows uh, uh, where the uh, tax dollars go or what they cover. Uh, since, uh, for, since job one is public safety, uh, it's reasonable to take the tax revenues and say, well, uh, uh, they're first going to public safety and then whatever's left over goes to other functions. Uh, <coughs> see basically that the cost of public safety uh, essentially pretty much takes care of the uh, total tax revenues in the general fund. It's a fact of life. It doesn't make it wrong. It's simply that we have to understand uh, that the rest of the functions uh, are funded by state shared revenues, fees and charges, and, base, and court revenues also, although court revenues generally match the court expenses. Uh, they, they cover their expenses and usually a little bit more. Uh, so basically what, what, what the, the uh, other functions count on is state shared revenues and, and fees. So this is why we get so down uh, downhearted on state shared revenues because they're 40% less than they were 10 years ago, even though they've increased 8% this year, the number was worse than 40 uh, before. So we're hoping they're on their way uh, up. They've got a long way to go to get to the levels that they, they were uh, 10 years ago. Um, in terms of our uh, police and fire, uh, right now our, our generally accepted uh, numbers for sworn police and fire, uh, which were re-justified or at least reviewed at five years ago in some studies. Uh, 160 police, 106 firefighters. Uh, we currently have on staff 134 sworn. 
So we're 26 down, that's 16%. Um, and uh, the fire, uh, 106, where you have 92, down 14, that's 13%. Um, the rest of the city in general is down about 25% uh, from the levels of 2004, 2005. Next, we turn to the page 24, uh, tax revenue factors, uh, general operating. Uh, you see the difference in, in what it's costing us uh, or the funds that we don't have to work with, uh, almost $2 million in the general, to the general operating millage, uh, and, uh, et cetera, down, down the list. The only, the only uh, increase is in the police and fire millage uh, revenues, and that goes into the police and fire uh, millage uh, accounts and cannot be used for any other purpose. On page 25, it's a breakdown of where the tax monies go for a, a typical home. I valued at 100000 taxable value 50000 uh, 843 to police fire on EMS, 88 to Parks and Rec, 86 to Roads Appearance and Drains, Library 140, all other 29. Uh, that's uh, about three, <laughs> that's three and a quarter a day. It's actually around three dollars a day because a typical home now is valued at somewhat less than 100. So it'd be taxable value less than 50. So you're looking at three dollars a day, and I think we deliver pretty good product for three bucks a day. In fact, a very good product for three bucks a day. Uh, property tax uh, dollar distribution on a typical home, 40% uh, 40, uh, 40 goes to the city, 60% to uh, other purposes, including uh, county, uh, other jurisdictions, uh, and education <coughs> at 60%. Page 27, the key assumptions that we work with, uh, state shared revenues are uh, per uh, OMB projections uh, and we, we anticipate the full re, uh, EVIP dollars this year uh, again and we're on target with the, we're monitoring the new rules. They apparently are supposed to be more user friendly, the only problem is when you read them you can't figure them out, uh, however uh, we uh, we, what we do is we, we deal directly with the Treasury Department. We use their forms, their format, and their approach. And since they're the ones that write the checks, that works real well. Uh, Treasurer's projection for investment income, everyone knows we're at record low interest rates and a record low interest environment. Uh, that's good if you're selling bonds, for example, uh, which is something we may have to look at, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's feasible at all, but I have I have sent a call in to our bond council to to indicate uh, let's get creative, let's at least look at the potential because uh, we're in a record low uh, environment. Uh, we will be coming to council to uh, to remarket uh, uh, bonds that we have because we can get an interest interest break. Uh, so that will be something we come. It's our library. That's your library uh, bonds. No, no, that's a that's a fire that's a fire a fire bond that's outstanding. A refunding we call it. So we'll be coming to council for that, uh, and that will save us some money. Uh, fund balance for oper no use of fund balance for operations in the general fund. Parks and Rec and Library is striving to be in the same situation in the future. Uh, zero percent, obviously. Concessions to be discussed. And that will be some homework that we need to do with the mayor and city council uh, during uh, upcoming meetings. Uh, manage attrition program continues. Uh, more aggressive monitoring of e economic conditions than ever before. And uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, five year financial planning focus. Uh, one of the things we'll be doing uh, in the next uh, a month or so is we will be updating the five-year plan, adding a year out, and uh, uh, reflecting the uh, audited numbers from the last audit. 
as well as once this budget is approved, we'll be working with this budget with a five-year plan. Uh, next, we're familiar with this. Uh, we reduced our personnel count. Uh, this is this is a rather rigorous exercise, so I'll say about 205 positions. When you get in the FTEs and counting an order of a person, two tenths of an FTE, uh, half of an FTE, and things that you get into, like in Parks and Rec, it gets real complicated. Uh, but we make a good faith attempt, and we're down about 24 percent uh, since uh, 2004. Uh, the next exercise we go through is uh, on the revenue side and the expenditure side. Uh, we take a look at uh, comparisons of the previous year, and we uh, create footnotes for anything over 5 percent. Uh, anybody can ask any question about any percent. Uh, but but 5% is our, our threshold, and the footnotes are there, ones that should probably maybe go through these real quick. We know the 11%, that has to do with taxable values. Uh, number three is the pension we've already talked about. Uh, number four is state shared revenues, that's because we got the EDIP money, we increased statutory significantly, uh, it's constitutional only goes up 2%. Constitutional is a reflection of the economy. The statutory is the uh, EBIP uh, success that we intend to maintain. <coughs> um, number five, the reimbursements is a technical adjustment, a different way of showing a figure that has no meaning in real life. Uh, number six is uh, fees, licenses, and permits, and that reflects the 50,000 new revenues uh, being charged for property transfer fees and also an increase in uh, Parents' revenues primarily uh, from vacant homes, uh, and we charge banks for uh, work that we do on vacant homes uh, after appropriate notification, uh, etc. Um, number seven, interfund reimbursements. Uh, that's a change in that. That's a technical adjustment, a decrease in cross charges. Uh, that's a good thing. We're making the budget less complicated, and also can't cross charge for employees that aren't with you anymore. So that number gets smaller. Uh, number eight is the most significant, and that is that we're uh, budgeting a equalization reserve for commercial appeals, and uh, so that's, uh, that's an increase. Um, and that's because of the unprecedented level, uh, which reflects, actually a reflection of the sluggish U.S. economy. That's why people are appealing. Uh, they're appealing because they have vacancies or they have uh, issues of income in their buildings, and they have to prove these appeals out. They have to prove the economics of it. We put our case forward. They put theirs forward, uh, and it's, it's just a fact of life at this point. Uh, we're hoping that this ends in one more fiscal year after this one. Um, the, the approach that we had taken previously is that we uh, uh, had, had the previous budget, we assumed that we could um, absorb most of the appeal costs by savings in the budget. Uh, we're, we know we're coming in under, under budget, but we don't think it's going to be enough to cover all of the uh, costs having to do with these appeals, so that's why we will likely be coming with an adjustment. Uh, of the 11 12 budget uh, in the next month. Uh, looking at the expenditure side, um, you've got uh, number one is uh, if you have a small budget, uh, it doesn't take much to get a reduction. This has to do with a, a person uh, going from a family plan to a single plan uh, in medical. Uh, number two, uh, that is uh, reserved for appeals. Uh, that's the other side of the two million that we set aside. Um, the human resources. Uh, it's going to be attrition, likely. Vac vacancy savings through attrition. Uh, community relations. Same thing. Uh, vacancy through attrition. Neighborhood information. 
specialist Terry Page uh, retired, and we are we've taken his work and massaged it around the existing uh, personnel. And Mr. Rosenthal tell you it's covered. And if you question whether it's covered or not, he'll give you a vigorous a vigorous answer that it's covered. Um, mayor's budget's down a little. Thank you, Mayor, for your contribution. Uh, you did the best you could. When you have a small uh, budget, sometimes you uh, small adjustments upward uh, show pluses, so this time it goes the other way. Um, police budget down, that's vacancies, nine sworn vacancies. Uh, fire budget uh, isn't down as much because their vacancies occurred over several years. But when you've got a fire budget only going up 1%, uh, that's headed the right direction. Sarah would be better but that would be contribution. Uh, buildings down 13.9, that is vacancies through attrition. Um, public Works Administration, uh, that goes down to zero because the folks aren't there to charge to other folks. That's attrition. So, uh, meantime, they keep getting the work done. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, overall, we're down 2.5 percent the general fund. Moving right along to <laughs> budget comparisons by function. Uh, the general fund is down 2.5 percent, as we indicated. Facilities maintenance is down 15 percent. That's going to be a uh, uh, reduction in capital projects. They had a roof project that got finished in 11-12. That was a big uh, item in their last year's budget. Uh, motor pool is down 8.6%. Uh, uh, percent, And uh, that's basically um, attrition and depreciation savings through the aging of equipment. Cable is uh, the league leader up, and that is 20%. Uh, but that is just to balance the budget. Uh, they have a, a an increase in their um, in their uh, revenues, and uh, that money uh, is comes in on the revenue side and also shows on the expenditure side. However, they cannot spend it because it's capital, and they can't spend it until they come to council to show the need for the capital projects. So, if that doesn't happen, then they'll have an underexpended budget. On the expense side, and that budget will, that, that residual will fall to, to uh, fund balance in the, in the table. Uh, moving right along, uh, major streets fund up for capital projects uh, as compared to last year. Uh, local streets down, the reason for that is they had to move some money over to majors. Uh, so. They're down a bit. Uh, municipal Street goes away. That's a technical. We used to have a fund for appearance monies, and then we uh, run it through that fund, and it was an accounting entity. Uh, the new approach is get rid of those accounting entities if you can. Uh, the auditors and I have a, we don't have a dispute on this one, but how they show fund balances. And the outside funds have become a mystery. Um, some of their new nomenclature is uh, less than uh, less than informative, and so we'll be working on assisting uh, the reader in understanding everything new uh, in their terminology. But the municipal street fund goes away, and the monies go directly to the major and local streets appropriately. Uh, so uh, there's no real change; it's just methodology. Um, water and sewer fund isn't up five percent, but uh, as we indicated. Uh, it's worth a, a short uh, note that uh, the pass-through from the Water and Sewer Authorities is up nine, nearly 9%. They submitted a budget of 5.03 increase uh, for the uh, customer. Uh, we are working to get that below 5% people are hurting. And uh, as we say, uh, FIO, figure it out. Or if AW, find a way. So we will get a below 5%. Um, block grant is a technical. We didn't bring uh, in the uh, the funds that come from uh, 
uh, the uh, SHIP program revenues. Uh, we, we will include those in the final budget, so that's just the technical. Energy block grant that was fully expended uh, and successfully, and uh, so that's showing a decrease, uh, but uh, for good reason. Neighborhood stabilization, we were awarded more dollars, and so that's up significantly. And that's it. So the total budget is uh, basically flat, uh, especially if you take out the grant increases. And uh, it reminds us that we're $146 million operation, and it's big business. Ten-year comparison of grant revenues. Our position on grants is simple. We don't use them for groceries. Uh, we don't uh, use them unrealistically. And we don't make bad deals that have to do with grants. Um, what you see is in, in 9, 10, and 10, 11, we had a substantial uh, increase uh, in employment grants in 9, 10, and uh, 10, 11 is uh, NSP. Uh, otherwise, we've kind of uh, leveled off. And um, we're not happy that the employment grants have uh, not increased. Uh, we, we have uh, made our, uh, we've expressed our concern in that regard uh, on the federal and state levels. Next uh, is our history of our taxable values. And uh, it shows one word, basically unprecedented, another one, uncertain. On charter water, <laughs> on relenting focus on the tax base. That's we got it. All right. So you can go back many more years than this, but if you just go back, uh, well, this is about 15 years, it looks like. Uh, you got. We never had a decrease of more than six tenths of one percent, and that uh, was just prior to Proposal A taking effect. Um, and ever since then, we have done okay, uh, but because we had new construction. Uh, but you can see what happens under Prop A when your new construction stops. The reason for that is the uh, Great uh, Recession, as it's called. Uh, look what happens. The Great Recession stops new construction, and also uh, you have businesses that are hurting because of the bad economy. So they may, they, they may appeal their tax values. Uh, that's their right to do so. And so the, you see what happens. Uh, unprecedented, but we're going to get through it. Next page. This is the composition of our tax base. Uh, this is why we're very concerned about personal property. Most cities, you know, probably there's an average of like 1.5% personal in the bedroom community, okay, but we are producing jobs, but we get punished. This is uh, what um, this exhibit was about, and uh, I, I want to discuss it further um, with uh, the leadership because we need to tell our story, and this, I think, helps to tell the story. The three cities that create a massive number of jobs have suffered greatly because the, the, the construct of the rules of the game uh, uh, absolutely punish. Uh, we're talking jobs, 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 and jobs. And then we're punishing the cities that create the jobs. So uh, might give someone some material to work with and, a, and another concept to hammer on. Um, but this is again, is <laughs> where, so we're uh, residential is 35%, and all the rest is uh, 65, uh, and that's what it's comprised of. The next uh, ugly page is what has happened plus what we project will happen. All right, so you're looking at taxable value on the left, taxable value losses uh, each year. And you're looking uh, uh, over to the right, 3% uh, first year, 9-10. Um, that's the reason we start with 9-10 is that's the first year we ever had in our entire
entire history a significant decrease in our total tax base. So that is the unprecedented part of this. Next year we got clobbered big time, 14 and a half. Now these are these are in the books. I mean these are not estimates. Next year we get clobbered again. That's the year when we went for a millage. Uh, unfortunately, it was approved by the voters May 3, 2011. <coughs> uh, as you'll recall, at that point, it accumulated 17.5%, and staring at another 13, we were talking about some, some major layoffs as the only way we could possibly uh, uh, survive going, going forward. Unfortunately, uh, we got the millage, but unfortunately, much of the value of the millage has been uh, eroded by these huge decreases that continue. Nobody expected them to be this big and to, be, and to take a hold uh, for such a long period of time. So 13.02 is in the books. So what's in the books is 30.52. That's there. You can't do anything about it. 12.13 is an estimate. Uh, if we're if we're super fortunate, it would be maybe six to seven percent, but that isn't going to happen because Mr. Tijerian and I had a talk this morning about it. He said, "Yeah, we'll be chasing these appeals all during the fiscal year," and uh, he agrees that eleven percent is fair guess as, as any as to where to where this all ends up. Uh, back in July, on July fourth. 11 is when we last redid the five year financial plan. Uh, that's when I changed the assumption from 6% to 11. Uh, sometimes it isn't good to be right. This is one of them. I have no idea where the 11 came from. Uh, I knew 6 wouldn't work, so, uh, but I uh, never to this day quite know where, the, where it came from originally, but it's the way things have worked out. Uh, eight and a half was the number that, that we put on for 13-14. We're hoping that to be wrong. Uh, city assessor says um, the residential is looking either either flat or maybe even improving a little. Can, can you say that? Both are flat. Okay, flat. <laughs> okay, but flat is better than negative. <laughs> and um, because of appeals, still still in the system where we put eight and a half in there. And if you just total all those up, you get to 50 percent. Um, since this is a declining balance situation, it's sort of the opposite of how interest works on the way up. So it's not quite 50.02, but it is when you add the numbers up. Uh, I try to explain it. Uh, some people like the explanation because they're mathematicians and others start napping during the thing, <laughs> saying, who cares, it's bad. So don't even go there with the nuances. But uh, we, we don't withhold any information. Um, next page has to do with the property tax. you have already mentioned uh, first year of the uh, proposal that was floating around. And, uh, I know that there are others that are on top of this more than I am right now. Between our lobbyists and other folks that spend time in Lansing. But I have not heard uh, any relief from this first year hit of, of 750000 meaning that every every property under 40000 as is indicated in the number, point number one under sources, um, is still, still there. Um, our total personal property is worth about $9 million. And if you have the worst case, that your total pays out with uh, zero reimbursement. Um, I don't think that will happen, but uh, I don't have a lot of security feelings about their replacement revenues. One of the revenue, uh, one of the the uh, justifications for one of the reimbursement schemes was if the state does not reimburse you fully then you can reinstitute the personal property tax. <laughs> now, this is not a water faucet. Yeah, I mean, you can't just turn it on and turn it off. If you go out of the business, I don't know how you go back into business. Uh, did Mr. T, what do you think? W would that be a nightmare or what? 
I mean, how would you go out of the business and then say, okay, now we're going to assess personal property? We have to start all over. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. So uh, that was not a real practical solution, but it actually did get articulated. Uh, the last two pages um, are our traditional pie charts, show you where the money comes from, pretty much where it goes. Um, if you'd like to look at changes in this, next year I'm going to put in the previous years along with this, uh, just, just to have the point of reference. Uh, the increases on the revenue side were state shared revenues went up, and that is because of the EBIP and the 2% uh, increase in constitutional. Uh, property taxes um, stayed about the same. Um, actually decreased a little because of 11%. Um, some of the categories might be interesting. Uh, uh, community Outreach and Family Services, that's comprised of one half of administration, one half of administration, all of clerk, one half of the law department, all of council, all of the mayor's office, and all of human services. So, you know, you, you make a category up that has some logic to it, and then you stick with it. But I don't know that anybody's ever asked where those categories came from, but I did today because I forgot where, how we did them. And uh, I, uh, so I, I wanted to check the figures. Um, that one went down a little because of the uh, decrease in uh, community relations. Uh, did go down. No, that one stayed pretty much the same. The one that went down, uh, uh, no, that's right. All the community relations is in there, so it went down a bit because community relations budget. Uh, community and economic development category is comprised of code, business development, building, planning, and a quarter of engineering. So there's some science to this. Uh, um, all funds, uh, we have a, a small problem. Uh, hopefully, there's oh, something here. There. Uh, we got that number. Passes around, please. Just put this one in. What happened is we had a page number wrong, and when we switched the page number, the old numbers jumped in from the year before. So I was analyzing today, trying to figure out what the changes were, and basically went nuts because there's no way that there's been no changes between last year and this year. So, finally figured it out. But, uh, so what's happening there is, if you compare it to the year before, water on the on the revenue side, state shared revenues are up, taxes are down because of the 11 percent, and water and sewer is up because of their capital projects are up 25 percent for last year. On the expenditure side, roads and facilities <coughs> are basically flat, We're spending more on roads but less on facilities. Public safety is down seven tenths of one percent. That has to do with vacancies. Water and sewer is up because of the, uh, again, the capital project costs. Um, I would like to suggest one other thing. Um, try to put all this in one page. Um, this is my one page wrap up. Uh, it's on pink paper. We like to use color. A little less of a headache. Keep track of this stuff. Um, these are kind of the things I thought were things we need to we need to remember going away from this discussion. Um, first is a let's go around. Does everybody have one? Or let's go around. I'll, I'll wait a minute. We have lots. We should have enough for everyone. Let's do it.
First of all, we need to remember that commercial appeals have two dimensions. Uh, they have the immediate uh, effect of uh, occasionally uh, uh, resulting in refunds, uh, significant at, at times, others smaller. Uh, but they also have a long-term downward adjustment to the taxable value. So once that taxable value gets lower, then you're back into the, the lesser of 5% or the rate of inflation, basically no matter what, once reduce, always reduce, WPW. That's a lawsuit. Uh, the name of the plaintiff was WPW. Uh, and that was versus the city of Troy. And uh, the net result was uh, a, an ongoing headache for, for uh, cities with a, with a lot of commercial. Uh, number two, all funds should endeavor to adopt the target of no use of fund down for operations. I become redundant on that one. Actually, I've done a lot of this, frankly, but apology there. Uh, further concessions are anticipated, that's redundant, uh, to be determined after a comprehensive discussion with the mayor and city council, which will occur in the next few weeks. Um, number four, uh, two more years of tax base trending downward uh, the year that this budget covers and uh, one more uh, are anticipated until we can stabilize and begin to expect some growth. Uh, tax base focus is hugely important. Uh, we're reminded that new construction comes out from under, other the, under the limits of either Proposal A or WPW so that under new construction we can take 100% of the value uh, that can be added to the tax base uh, for new construction. Um, the sixth point I would suggest uh, that we walk away with is uh, we need to seek creative breakthroughs and approach to existing commercial properties to either enhance their taxable value or to bring the land to its highest and best use, which I think is a nice way of, of uh, saying maybe some of them have to go down by the wrecking ball. Uh, we don't exactly know how that's going to happen, uh, how, what our role might be, uh, but uh, we need to be relentless in our, in our desire to get the tax base back uh, to where it belongs, uh, to a much stronger posture, uh, to recover from what's happened in the economy, which has been frankly devastating. Uh, continuation <coughs> of our comprehensive community appearance and code enforcement efforts is key. Uh, I'm very proud of the way the city looks. Uh, I think um, I, lo I love the letter that was sent out by Councilman Fricassi, uh because it reminds some outside people that uh, that have a responsibility to communities that create jobs like ours, make them look good. No dead trees, uh, no bad uh, sod uh, or lack of sod. Uh, grass seed with this netting over it doesn't work when. Uh, especially when the uh, sprinklers aren't installed. Uh, I thought it was an excellent letter, and, uh, and uh, we appreciate, like we said, to say always, uh, every call we get, even if it's crabby, we appreciate, although some of the crabby ones are very difficult to appreciate. But if there's anything out of that call that we can do better, uh, we're interested, and we, can't, we don't see everything that other people see. So we're real serious about uh, 796 eyes. We want calls. And uh, we're encouraging people, if they're in doubt, make a phone call. Um, number eight, explore all means to achieve significant capital improvements, infrastructure and facilities. Um, I don't know what that means exactly, uh, but uh, we're going to look at every avenue. I don't know that there are, there are any, frankly. Uh, I'm very discouraged with these uh, Act 51 revenues that require us to move money around from here to there and squeeze this and that. Um, where we never want to end up is where, frankly, a lot of the cities are getting, and that is that they're turning down money. They're turning down money because they cannot come up with the matching funds. Uh, our, our million six pretty much is matching funds for the, for the most part. Our, to almost our entire capital project uh, list is matching funds other than the, I think the uh, bridge street bridge monitoring and a couple of other things. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, we're not giving up beating the subject up, but I don't know um, what we can do with it. But uh, infrastructure and capital improvements is huge. But in the meantime, what we got's got to look good, and uh, we're very strongly committed to that. And I think code and community appearance people are doing a bang up job on that. Um, which, by the way. Jerry, can you explain that ordinance you're talking about? Maybe that tweak, or is it too early? Which one? The one about April rather than May. I can Grant. explain it. Or, it's or simple. We're just going to we're going to attempt to uh, uh, back it up with council approval from uh, May 1st back to April 1st each year. Uh, due to this, due to spring hitting in mid March this year, uh, we took a we took a beating on these uh, on the grass growth. Uh, it was it was nuts. We're still catching up, and it's 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 a matter of that that will have added protection to the city on the appearance if we can. If it should happen again, we'll be prepared for it. Yeah. As simple as that. Back it up a month. We um, got comments about some of the city-owned properties. We took them to heart. We did a large tour. Oh, yeah. uh, we jumped on a fire uh, fire hall that needed. More attention. Uh, it was cut, but there's some, there's some uh, more work that needs to be done. Uh, we're working with uh, fire at the headquarters to improve some appearance there. Um, so, and there are some some houses that we owned, uh, we contracted with the company. They didn't come up to expectations, but that's been resolved, and we don't expect uh, these problems to recur. But anybody that has any issues with regard to weeds, uh, uh, lawns, uh, et cetera, 796 eyes, please. Um, I think uh, number nine is uh, continually hone our message um, and then convey it aggressively, effectively, and consistently. Um, the first exhibit I did was an attempt. Uh, I hope it helps a little. Uh, but we need we need again uh, to be proud of the fact that we're creating jobs in this city, and uh, we we deserve some sort of recognition for that, and some uh, 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 what is it a hand up uh, from from state authorities uh, and legislative affairs in that regard. Um, number ten, stay the course or seek to improve it, and again reiterating where we started. Uh, maintaining a focus on tax base enhancement while simultaneously reducing operating costs is the key to the city's long term sustainability as an independent and thriving municipality. With that, I think I'll take a seat. Thank you very much.
that money is kind of the resurfacing from Northwestern to uh, Greenfield Great is deal. coming from uh, major streets? It's major streets, but we're getting the, uh, through the state, there's the, uh, the 3R project, okay. which is a, like a mill and fill type thing with yeah. curb fixes and test basins. Well, my, my question really is, um, can't the DDA contribute to that? Uh, they are going to be looking at doing some, some contributions or crosswalks and some signal upgrades and that type of stuff. I, I, th I thought uh, DDA money could be used for curbs and um, street paving. There are enhancements. They can, can do enhancement stuff. I'm just thinking of tapping DDA money as opposed to just stretching our... Our dollars. Yeah. We can truly look into it. Um, the DDA has, you know, talked about new signage and fences. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. but it seems to me the roads are more important. Um, <coughs> um, I, I'd like uh, to someone in the police department uh, we're I didn't realize that we're still getting that auto theft grant and um, $291,000. Um, specifically, what, is, what can that be spent for? It's two auto theft detectors. It's two auto theft detectors. I'm sorry. Oh, it, it covers two oh, detectives. It, it covers them. Yes, it covers two detectives. They're overtime. And uh, they have to specifically work out of that, though, to get it. Okay. And there's benchmarks that they have to meet. Yeah. Um, I remember the grant. I did, it didn't realize that it, it was we were still receiving it. Yes. Uh, somehow I lost that. Um, it's, uh, Jim, you listed liquor license um, revenue. It's not a lot in the scheme of um, our revenue. We consider it part of debt as a state share revenue.
but the people that are on the left hand side just kept turning to you know when the a traffic break they just kept turning and turning it would seem to me that if uh, a sign like the one at 12 and Greenfield where there's a sign hanging right up by the, the traffic signal that says no turn on red mm -hmm. so that when they look up there they see it rather than have to look someplace else for it would be helpful so when we get into the negotiation for the, the contract or the contract for the signal modernization it would seem like that would be part of the conversation Okay, that is why, and uh, going back to the previous question, so is why these do tend to come these onesies mostly. Most of the time, well, they some are, of yeah. them can be combined. Most of these are going to be onesies. Most of them are onesies. Because they all have some peculiar uh, pieces to them, either in funding, uh, different funding sources, um, different percentages, different bidding processes. So that's why they tend to kind of come to one, one of the yeah. time. So if we keep that in mind, uh, that we're negotiating the onesies, mm -hmm. maybe it will, will help. Here that or might as well take down the other signs because nobody's going to take that. Now I have a question, and maybe the, the explanation can help me out. Let's say we have a, an owner, and we're talking about the proposal A, and we're talking about WPW. Um, <coughs> Suppose we have a building owner that has owns two buildings in Southfield and they're both partially filled. And he wants to play games with us. Can he move uh, he moves people out of one building and into the other one? Declares that he's he's lost all the value of that one. Even though he's causing the problem himself, yeah. it doesn't seem quite right. Well, yeah. Well, he could also appeal his taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, the building that he's filled up, we can only raise his taxes, uh, whatever the cost of the house. I guess. Okay. Uh, somehow maybe we need to get to, to our legislators, or to our either our legislative people or uh, lobbyists to uh, include that into the discussion if they ever get back to the WPW. Um, we have, when you talk about the unassigned general money balance, uh, will that have a negative impact on our economy? Uh, would if we saw the bonds. Okay, we're going to be doing a refunding. We do the refunding. We've already brought it that into play. Uh -huh. uh, what what we're going to do is probably a private placement. Okay, because we don't want Moody's. Moody's standing for us right now. We've got a good rating because basically we're losing it. Okay, if you look at our numbers and what's there, I mean, they they would they would you know down. Yeah, sure. We, we have a lower rate of day. Oh, I guess we don't. They are convinced that, first of all, they like that we set aside the field up. They like the, the work we do is trying to figure out, you know, they like the five-year plan. They know that we do what we have to do. We know all about the pink sheets. We need to be the pink sheets. And so we need to be the pink sheets. This, what we said is whatever we have to do, we'll do. They basically apply into our to our our committee. Um, the millage helps with the assessment. Millage. But right now, until some of this uncertainty goes away, I, I want to stay away from, from initiating the bond bond issue. But the, the private place, both the private place. So I have to get educated on that. Okay. In fact, I put in a call to our bond council today to talk about bond life. There's dollars to be saved on the one bond that's out there because it's interest rates are, you know, they're just at record. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, on page 18, you show zero in debt service, but don't we still have, 
Don't we still have the bands standing on the west side? The two of them? One and two of them? Uh, yeah, they, but they are inc incorporated in the water and sewer budget. This, by debt service thing, um, that's when you have a, a, a village just for a <coughs> bond. So, no. for example, there's two kinds of bonds LPGO, limited tax general obligation bonds. That's what we normally do. And they go, they become the responsibility of the department to put in their budget. If you go out and have a village and you say, you know, we need to do this and that, and you go to the public and they say, you get two mills to do this and that, you have to show that. In the debt service? In the debt service. Okay. Uh, the fact that where the money came from for those makes a difference? Yeah. What, the nature of the, of the uh, okay. debt. All right. So, for example, Parks and Recreation has uh, debt within their within their uh, their uh, uh, co uh, cost their budget. Library does. Streets. Streets are still paying for the work that we did two years ago. Um, so those are but those are limited all under that heading. Yeah, limited tax okay. general obligation bonds. Okay. Um, on page 20, the police and fire pension, <coughs> that's <coughs> based on the investment. And if it's, un, if it's underfunded, we have to make it that up in, in the village. Right. And went up about not quite one per one mil. Yeah. Yeah. Quite um, is, is there a limit on how much that can go? No. So if, if the investments are in a dumper, we can continue to raise the millage that we have, uh, yeah. we have to cover? The problem is, is a four-year average that goes on, okay. and there's still a year or two that were real bad to fall off. Once they fall off, then we'll probably get a uh, reduction because, you know, of course, the market now has gone recently. If they, if they were doing just fine, and as you know, they Last year you could have 12 inch weeds 
this year we're only going to allow six inch weeds because the whole neighborhood looks so much better. Um, and I don't know if we can do that and still be on the right side of the wall. But, uh, Good question. And, and maybe it's something that we can encourage the homeowners associations to put the pressure on that uh, uh, or get to us with uh, uh, for empty homes to, to mow those uh, mow those loans. So I don't know. I, it's, it's something that we need to think about. So you're well, suggesting maybe that the, the height that's permitted <coughs> ab uh, above which we cut? Yes. You would maybe look yeah, at, yeah, to look at that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put it all together with the eight holes. Sure. Right. Yeah, if most of the grass is three inches tall, uh, I'm not suggesting that four inches get somebody in trouble, but maybe eight inches is not a, a good number either. Um, and I'm going to jump to another subject, and that was the, the draft of the homeowner's manual. In there, it says that if you want to buy paper lawn bags, you can come here to, to City Hall to pick them up. It didn't say anything about fire fire stations. Are we no longer selling at fire stations? No, we're, we're still selling. Still selling. Okay, that should be in there because if we're if we're going to be customer oriented, we try we ought to try to make it as friendly to the customers as possible when <coughs> they go to the friendly neighborhood <coughs> fire station and pick up lawn bags. Those are the intangibles we talk about. Right. And absolutely. Everything that counts, it counts. Right. Something like that. Yeah. Everything that. You Everything that counts, you can't count it necessarily. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you. Oh, you did a you did a great job, Jim. Yeah.
can help the students. And you know, when you look at other communities surrounding us, when you go to Rolo, I mean, if you park on the street, you're going to pay for being in that community. When you go to Birmingham, you park on the street, you're going to pay to be in that community. And we've got prime land here on the library side of Rolo Institute complex that the days of the freebies are over.
especially in the colored area. Okay. Especially things. Okay. Uh, we're fair. We do it the right way and we do notification. But we do not put up in bank owned homes that are not maintained. Okay. And, uh, you know, we, we enforce the ordinances which we are, we are zero tolerance for people who can walk parking handicapped spots. That is just not right. They can walk and be part of the wellness program. <laughs> <laughs>
that uh, it's actually doing mm -hmm. better here. So mm -hmm. the more we do, we keep them happy, the more we keep our quality mm -hmm. of life, the more we keep all the communication of being with people. If we still characterize it, uh, the good as we make this, this turn in the years to come. And this is why the letter that we should understand. Right. The people are people are special.
pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, like but that's just one. I, I mean, if we're going to allow them to sit on that property and, and, and make money, we wouldn't allow them to sit in front of City Hall. So we'd let them do it at our parks all the time. Let them pay a fee to do that if they want to do that. Also, we've talked a long time, and I think the time has come that we have businesses to register. I was in another city, and I saw the license on the wall like this is a registered business in the city. And I think that time, that time has come. We are registering vacant property, rental property. We're doing all this in the residential community, but we're not doing anything in the business community. I think it helps us because we really don't have a good sense of what we have in the city because there's no requirement to, uh, and I don't want it to be punitive. I think it helps us when we're talking about our business space and what do we have. Um, and then the other thing, we were talking about um, the uh, ambassador program. And I just recently had a uh, resident that said, I want to become a police reserve. And I, I told him I didn't know what the process was and found out we don't have a police reserve program. And uh, I know I've already talked to you about this, Jim, but other communities have police reserves. Is that a program that we can implement here where we get the community involved, where you actually have a, um, a volunteer program for people to be involved in the community, and is it a good thing for us to do? Uh, I think it's something we should look into. Lastly, I want to say that this doing more with less or, or less with less, we will never have a grip on that until we do a real organization in charge. I say this every time. We have to know how many seats we have in each department and what they're doing. When I came onto this council, I was always presented with an organizational chart, and I could literally see what the departments were, who was sitting there, and it gave you this, this visual um, uh, complement to the budget. And um, right now, because of all the people leaving, and there's more that will be leaving, um, and I have said this before, is Jim, you work so hard, and it's, it's become normal. But we are at the point where we're so bare. <coughs> we are so bare that um, we must invest in cross. We're doing cross training, there's no doubt. But <coughs> succession planning is going to become a, not become. It's, it's the reality that's wearing us in the face. And we're praying for good health for all of our employees right now. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's my daily thing. Bless all the employees and keep them healthy. There's some beef issues and, and, and all of this that we can just spend quality time on. Yes, we do. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, this is not a complaint. Board, too. This not is not a complaint, but this is a necessity for us to, to continue to operate this, this city half today and this budget is that we're going to have to have that organizational chart and that succession plan. Um, and the other thing I want to talk to you at um, a conference that, that I attended on a different subject, they talked about how we need to really focus on wellness <coughs> of because we are pushing them harder. We are, they are aging, and we need to have, and, we, and you, you actually we do share there's premiums that reduce uh, the, the, our obligation for health care costs when we have a very active wellness program. And I know we have started that, but I haven't seen well, we, it we, grow. We, uh, we have. Uh, we cut and trim back some of it because, frankly, we used to sponsor people who did certain medical tests, which is great, mm -hmm. but the quality
you can say rice, serious illnesses. All you need to do is find a mm -hmm. get one serious illness where you have to move. So when this happens, mm -hmm. that's not the issue. Mm -hmm. And that'll face a whole lot of wellness programs. Mm -hmm. That's more experience rated. Now, I, I want to compliment our public safety because sometimes I'm watching TV and I look at other cities and they, some of the law enforcement people are so overweight, I just wonder how they can be effective. And, and ours appear to be healthier and uh, when it comes to, um, you know, their stature and things. I, I want to compliment them uh, because Thank when you. it's time to chase them, I, I want to <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Pamela Gerald, P.O. Box 155, Southfield, Michigan, 48037-0155. My telephone number is 248-352-9188. Tonight I want to talk about Southfield's stupid tree law. Um, first of all, Southfield, and I think most residents know and um, have been knowledgeable about this, that Southfield, the city, was built on swampland. And we are designated as Tree City, USA. And that designation came from the Arbor Day Foundation. And we've had it for the last 25 years, and that's good to be a Tree City USA. But this is how we became Tree City USA. Not because we're necessarily doing the right thing or we were selected out of thousands of cities in the United States. We basically met four standards. The first standard was we have a tree board or department. We have a tree care ordinance. We have a community forestry uh, program with an, with an annual capital expenditures of at least $2 per capita, and we have a proclamation observing Arbor Day Foundation. And this is a good thing to have because it basically just allows us to apply for grants from the State Forestry Department. All of you have heard about the benefits of trees. You've heard about the beautification, oxygen, shade, possibly lowering your air conditioning bills, Trees can also provide habitation for wildlife. They can increase the value of your real estate. And trees can also suck up the water to alleviate pressure on the county's drain system. What you are not told about trees are the potential problems. Tree roots can expand, causing a break in the structural foundation. Trees can become a hazard for DTE power lines, and we have not been doing a good job assisting and working with DTE to be able to do that. Uh, storms can also cause trees to fall on your house or on the road, in the middle of the road, and a resident sends a certified letter to our tree department or our tree lady uh, advising the city about the same thing, and a tree did fall over the road, and it's purported that a resident hit that tree and had a car accident, so we could do a little bit better on that. Trees also contribute to wildfires. They can block the sanitary sewers and they can also be a screen for criminal activity. Now, what I think the city needs to do, the city needs to present to, did you want to say something, Mr. Fakasi? Because um, I'm trying to speak, and, minutes, I'm trying to speak and I, uh, I, right to I think that I'm being a little bit distracted uh, by you. So if you can talk to the city attorney when you're speaking at the table, I'll talk to, I'll talk to a resident, like and I'll yeah. talk to a resident when I need to, okay, while you're speaking. Now, we have a tree fund, and I think that it, it's not a good thing to insist that residents don't have a right to decide if they want to have <laughs> trees on their property. If you want to cut a tree down, you're supposed to pull a permit. So you're basically alerting the city to the fact that you are going to do some modifications in your yard. If you decide that you don't want trees in your yard, the city makes you pay into this interest-bearing tree fund <coughs> account, and they use the money to plant, it, to plant trees elsewhere in the city where they need it. Now, residents should not be responsible for doing that. It is the city's responsibility. It is the forestry department responsibility applying for those grants to get money for those trees. Now, how you can encourage a resident to plant trees is giving them <coughs> a 50% subsidy, which I think we just recently started doing, or giving them trees at a reduced price. This will encourage people to tramp, uh, this will encourage people to plant trees. When people pull a permit, they're doing the right thing. When people just cut down trees, like it's purported about the gentleman with the charter buses, uh, he 
purportedly cut down trees without pulling a permit and the city didn't know about it. All of this can just be resolved if we were to be a little bit more code enforcement oriented. And I'm pleased to say that I had a very nice conversation with our code enforcement director, Mr. Gerald Witkowski. I made a suggestion about having a town hall meeting in which the residents would get an opportunity to come and talk with code enforcement and code enforcement would have an opportunity to do some real serious dialogue and say what the city expects when you move in, how they code enforce, so we can alleviate this perception of code enforcement being biased. And I wanted to also say too that if we're going to explore the options of meters in the city, um, we need to be careful with that because we don't <coughs> want residents suggesting that we have meters in church parking lots. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, and also, um, Gerald, your time is up. our Southfield blog. Thank you. I just like to say to council, uh, please wait until everyone has spoken. If you have anything you want to say to any of these speakers or the comments, please wait until everyone has spoken, and then I'll give Mr. Shred a chance if he wishes to answer first. Mr. Council, this is a council meeting. Yes. If I want to speak to the city attorney, I will. Okay. Right. San Carlos, Southfield 48076. And I'd first like to say, Mr. Charette, you do rock and you did an excellent job with the uh, budget. Good evening, everyone. I was unable to speak at last week's May 14th council meeting, but I want you to pretend that today is May 14th so that you will be able to fully capture the message that I bring this evening. This account was given to me not by officers who work for the police department, but instead by civilian employees who work at the police headquarters. This is a rarity in that most of my speaking efforts over the last eight months have been in, in acting as an ad hoc ombudsman for the police department officers who are still fighting hard to eliminate current acting chief Brian Gerald from being chosen as the permanent chief of police. Instead of the officers making an effort to deliver detail pertaining to unbecoming actions of Mr. Gerald, I've been asked to deliver this account by certain civilians who work for the police department. Exactly one year ago today, May 14, 2011, was the last employment day for former Chief of Police Joe Thomas. On this day, Chief Thomas executed one of his last leadership actions in appointing two lieutenants to lead the department along with Brian Gerald, who was Deputy Chief at the time. When Chief Thomas announced that the lieutenants were going to be double promoted to share the chief duties with Brian Gerald, 
Brian Gerald became so enraged that he barged back into Chief Thomas's office and commenced to shouting profanity and vulgarity, words and phrases, including F-bombs and the like, to the outgoing chief of police, Mr. Gerald's own boss. Mr. Gerald's profane and vulgar tirade was witnessed by employees who were in earshot or invisible, uh, excuse me, visual range of this out of control behavior against his outgoing boss. This is not an urban legend occurrence. It is widely accepted as fact within the department. Therefore, I will not use the word allegedly as I give this account to the council members, legal and HR staff leaders, and city administrators. Maybe some of you knew about his actions, maybe some of you did not. But these <coughs> employees needed to tell their story. The story is a significant contribution in adding weight to the premise that Brian Gerald lacks the emotional intelligence expected for the chief of police position. Past behavior is a scientific indicator for future behavior. If he will cuss out his outgoing police chief executive in front of others, then he will justify it if he carries out the same disrespectful and intimidating behavior to cohorts, subordinates, and possibly residents. This action can also be an indicator that Mr. Jarrell tends to have a temper or tends to act in a knee-jerk manner when stressed. Can you really imagine that Mr. Gerald felt he was entitled to cuss out his outgoing boss, not just using high volume or loud words, nah, he felt entitled to throw around F-bombs and other profanity phrases to Chief Thomas's face. This was not done in private where he couldn't be heard. I guess Deputy Gerald was overcome with the resentment he was feeling about not being selected as the sole interim chief of police, which normally would have occurred if Chief Thomas had recommended him. This type of behavior is another indicator of a low level of executive intelligence that does not reflect the Southfield standard of behavior expected by any employee, especially those who lead on an executive level. It's highly disrespectful and abusive. Mr. Gerald's propensity to engage in this type of unchecked behavior poses as a potential legal and financial risk to the city. He further exhibits poor judgment and a lack of integrity that compels our officers to continue to demand the highest, highest quality of morale building leadership and authority than what he exhibits. I guess last year Brian Gerald felt that his kahunas had grown bigger and since Chief Thomas was retiring, he could cuss out Chief Thomas because there would be no punishment or discipline consequence or a punch in the mouth. But with the rumors swirling around that Chief Thomas could be returning, as Mr. T would say, I pity that fool. Can you imagine that? The boss that you cussed out could be coming back. That's why you don't burn bridges. You may have to come back over the same one that you lit on fire. As I've stated before, I stand behind the commitment to the Southfield officers and now certain civilian employees to continue to move forward examples of substandard leadership qualities portrayed and exhibited by Brian Gerald until he is no longer a candidate for the permanent chief of police position.
having taken many of Zumba and aerobics classes in 115, it's great for <coughs> that, but it did not seem as though it would lend itself in at all the same way to the SRO production. The other venue, which is the um, youth, um, the youth room in the library, uh, I'm not familiar with them. I haven't seen, so I, I really couldn't speak to that. <coughs> I assume that the reason this has come to pass that the productions will be um, ended is for budgetary reasons, um, and that that venue could be used more. I guess the thinking is the venue could be used more for weddings in the sum in the summer and possibly in the spring and fall. Um, once again, I have made use of that venue for a wedding. My daughter got married there several years ago. It was great. It was beautiful. It was a uh, you know, wonderful uh, outdoor setting. Um, but that was in the summer and there were no productions scheduled at that time. So I, I, I am just not really sure that there would be that much income generated um, from <coughs> further utilizing it for that purpose, except perhaps, perhaps there were some conflicting dates in the spring and in the fall. So I um, am just not sure who else I would address to um, to request that this decision be reconsidered. Perhaps someone in Parks and Rec. Um, but I, I am just sad to see that <coughs> it's coming to us because you know we've lost our symphony and now we're losing our, our theater production company. And, and um, I, I just wish there were some way that that decision could be reversed. Um, and a second issue I wanted to speak to, if I have a couple minutes here, I don't know if I do, was um, a commendation for an employee uh, with, I believe, Streets and Highways, um, which I guess falls under, uh, under public works. Um, we've had a problem with drainage <coughs> on our street, and the staff person that I was in touch with was very responsive. He returned phone calls. Um, he returned my neighbor's phone calls. And he actually came out to survey the situation and try to deal with the problem as best he could. And I, I really thought he went above and beyond the call of duty for this. And I think he did really try to reach the best solution for all involved, which was a small, it's a, it's a small number of our neighbors. There were just uh, three of us actually involved. But I think he really tried to address the problem. I'm not sure that um, this will improve the situation altogether because I think there's a larger problem of drainage and uh, the piping not being graded properly. But I do appreciate that he was very responsive to our needs and, you know, as people have here pointed out, um, staff are having to do more, um, but uh, I, I just think that Southfield generally has been staffed with people who are trying really to, to do a good job. And I guess my last comment, I don't know if I'm running out of time here, is that I did notice in my calendar this year that there are still several department head vacancies, and I believe there were those vacancies last year in the calendar. And it just seems to me that after this much time, um, it, would, it would just be so much more beneficial and provide more certainty both within the department and for the residents and the businesses um, if that situation were, were settled, at least to some extent. Again, maybe the, there are budgetary considerations, but I just think that that would provide more confidence if people knew that there were uh, individuals in charge of a particular department. So hopefully when I get my 2013 calendar. Okay, thank you very much. Have one. 